Some of them are going to be beneficial, others not so much. The sheriff of Eureka Springs has been murdered, and ruffians have come to take over the town. You are a bunch of townsfolk in the game Townsfolk Tussle, and your objective is to defend Eureka Springs from these ruffians, and hopefully one of you will become the townsfolk sheriff along the way. Will you save Eureka Springs? Find out in the game Townsfolk Tussle, a 2-5 to five player game that takes about 45 minutes per player that you add for ages 14 and up by Panic Roll. This is a game in which you're going to be moving around a board, utilizing actions, collecting certain equipment, as well as taking part in attempting to solve these sheriff-like duties as badge cards. You'll also be utilizing town event cards and fighting different ruffians that have different abilities and different unique trick up their sleeve depending on how far along the game you get. You'll be going against four ruffians and a final fight that changes the game and makes it a little more challenging as you upgrade your townsfolk in this cooperative two to five player board game. Let's go take it down below, I'll show you what comes in the game, how it plays, basically a rough estimation of what you get in ev for everything, and then we'll come up with my review. Welcome to the character setup for Townsfolk Tussle, and the first thing you're going to do in the game is select a character, and there are a ton to choose from, but I just went ahead and chose two for a two-player setup. And in the game, I went and chose Georgie Irongut and Hell No Bulwark, and each of them is going to come with their own unique token that you're going to place on this beaten and buy in order. Go and select it and place them wherever you would like right after the ruffian space. Additionally, you're going to get a character space or token here. Go ahead and set that aside for now and put your stat markers on the indicated spaces with the color. You should have an accuracy of minus one and a moxie for two and movement for five and so on and so forth for this character here, but they're all unique and they're all different. You're also going to get starting gear for each character. Like for instance, this character here, Georgie, is going to get dad's head hammer and a stale character. Take, and this one over here is going to get overalls and a wheat sickle. Also give everybody a character cheat sheet that'll also tell you the round order and how it plays. And 10 money. Everybody's going to get 10 money, which you'll be using for the buying phase. Then after that, go ahead and take these badge cards and give every player three of them. These will be used throughout the fighting phase. And if you accomplish them, they'll have unique abilities and things that you'll gain on them that will improve your ability in combat. Make sure that when you equip your pieces, they go to each of these spaces on on the left and right hand side of your board. There's a right hand, a left hand, an accessory, head and chest space that you can place your gear. If you have a two handed weapon, you only get to have one weapon in your slots. And you can ob obviously switch these items out in the game if you spend moxie, which is a certain value for actions. You can have your health, which is gonna dictate how long your character will survive based on if it goes to zero, or it's removed from the game. Movement is how far it can move on your turn. Moxie is the amount of actions you can take on your turn based on the cost and accuracy is how well you're going to be able to hit the boss based on the weapon that you've acquired. After that, everybody's going to get a town event. Go ahead and give one to everybody and read them uh, individually to yourself and determine what to do with them. Generally, you're going to do in order, uh, activate them and do something unique. It'll twist the game up. Also, additionally, townsfolk events here are going to have these orange borders on the top of the card, and when they do, those are secret that are held in your hand up until the point where you can actually utilize them in the game. They'll provide a something, something unique to the game as far as how it goes. Set the rest of the decks aside, the badges, these uh, extra boss cards, ruffian cards, and of course the starting gear cards. You'll be using them as the round proceeds. Take out four of the boss tokens at random and place them in each of the spaces, the trump, the hooligan, and the troublemaker, and of course the final fight, and make sure that you don't know what they are. After everybody has their character set up, you move on to the buying phase. The next part after you've given yourself three feats and you've done all the town events that you can do and held the secret ones, you're going to move on to the shopping phase. And in the shopping phase, you'll be using this board here, which will also let you spend coins to reset the board. So in instance here, eight coins will let you refresh the board so you can buy different things. There's a ton of different cards here that will let you buy things throughout the game so you're 
you're never going to run out of options. I place these guys face down, but you're simply going to tear them all face up when the buying phase begins. You place them in these slots here and there's going to be 10 of them. And each of these cards are items and equipment that you're going to be utilizing throughout the fight phase. So for instance, here we have this helmet here. We've got a chest piece of gear here. We've got a melee one-handed shield and so on and so forth. On the cards, it's going to tell you what they do, what slot they go in, how much they cost, and how they benefit you. If they have a highlighted area, that's going to improve your max stats on your character board, and you're going to move it up. But whenever you remove this card from your inventory, you'll put it back down. Others are going to be of use throughout combat. Some of them are not going to be bonus attacks or, or, or stat boosts, but instead might cost you moxie throughout the game and let you do something unique, like this doctor's stethoscope, return a knocked out townsfolk to the board adjacent to you with one HP, but you can only use it once a fight. Players are going to buy these cards one at a time in buying order from the bottom to the top of the board on the track that I had just placed out, and you can choose to buy or sell an item at half its value, and you're going to go ahead and simply go through that until people decide not to buy or sell anymore, or people run out of money and no longer can do so. After you've done buying and selling, you're going to move on to the fight phase of the game. There's only two phases in the game. There's the buying phase and the fight phase. And the fight phase is where the, all the action is. Let's go ahead and talk about that now. Now it's time for the final phase of the game, the fight phase, the thing you've all been waiting for. In this phase, a ruffian is gonna pop out. It's gonna emerge and you're gonna flip over the buying area and turn it into the fighting area. So in this case here, we're gonna go ahead and flip over to see who we're fighting. And we won't know until this specific phase here. And in this case, we're fighting Lawman Dozy. Lawman Dozy is going to have a specific story along with what they do depending on the fight. There are four fights in the game, so basically you're going to go through the buying and then fighting phase four times. And after you do that, you're going to hopefully win the game if you don't ever get knocked out in the process. And right now we're just doing the chump phase, which means that he doesn't have any unique abilities in this specific phase. He's just going to do whatever he says here. I've set up his health and his movement for eight health and six movement. I placed it on this board here. And also there's going to be a unique deck for Lawman Dozy, and you're gonna place it on the action space of this booklet here. And this character has a unique set of cards that is going to do a unique set of things throughout the game. Your objective is to reduce his health to zero, and there are certain ways in which you can kind of mess with him. He has a weakness specifically that says whenever he falls asleep at the end of an action, he takes a damage, and characters are hopefully going to succeed. Now, uh, when you flip this guy over, there's two things about this board. The first thing is it's going to show you the setup for the game board. It's also going to go ahead and show you what the final fight's going to look like and what you'll have to do in order to beat the boss because he becomes miraculously more challenging. Like, for instance, this guy here will obtain a wife and you'll have to actually fight two bosses at once. And he's actually invulnerable until you defeat the wife. However, the wife comes back at certain points in the game based on these numbers here. So if you bring him his health to seven after defeating the wife, she's going to come back and you have to defeat her again before you can do damage to him. So there are some unique twists to the final fight of the game. But regardless, you'll flip over this board here and then you're going to take out the terrain deck and you're going to find all the terrain cards associated with this board and place them in the terrain pool here. There are two types of different terrains. You're going to have features and obstacles. Obstacles you can't move through and features you can. However, you can interact with any of them depending on what they are and where you need to interact will tell you on the card. Some of them will give you unique equipment. Some of them are going to give you items or coins and others are going to hurt you or make it more challenging for you to get through them like the cornfield. Placing these guys all out, then you're going to go ahead and take the terrain pieces and you're going to set up the board for the game. So in this specific game here, you'll look at the board and you're just going to go ahead and place it. So I've got a J here for this one. This one's going to go right here. This is going to go over here. This one will go over here with the car right next to it going this way. And then we're going to have this one right over here. And finally, this one right there. It'll also tell you where the ruffian is going to be. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and take Lawman Dozy, look at the board here, and it's going to indicate where it goes on the board. And remember that ruffians actually hold four spaces as opposed to the character's one space. The townsfolk have their own unique spaces that you can go ahead and place on the board as well. And you're simply going to place them down in any of those little T-marked areas on the game board. After that, the entire game is set up. And if you're not doing the final fight, you're simply going to go ahead and flip this board back over and play based on the fight or the challenge that is associated with this ruffian. 
when you're taking turns in the game, you're going to simply start in beating order now, which is the opposite of buying order. The ruffian is going to go first. And how it works is the ruffian's going to draw a card from the deck and do what it says down the line. Generally, it will associate itself with a target. It will move to that target. It will do something. And if that thing is effective or is able to reach the character, sometimes a unique effect or thing will trigger and affect the characters in negative ways. After you've drawn the card and done whatever it says, that is the end of the ruffian's turn and it will move on to the other characters in turn order. Also note too, depending on the boss and the amount of players, will determine the boss's health and movement and what unique things and twists will be in the final fight. Characters, however, on their turn, they have a plethora of things that they can do. Obviously, they can fight, and you can fight with one weapon at a time, and you're going to basically be using, utilizing your moxie to do so. So a weapon is going to say something like, it costs two moxie to use that. It'll say how much accuracy is required. You'll be rolling this die here, adding up any bonus accuracy or negative accuracy you have on your character. And if your accuracy meets the weapon's accuracy, you'll do the damage the weapon says. And in this case, the sickle seal says you need a f plus five accuracy, and it's going to cost you two moxie and it'll do one damage to the boss. And so then after you're done using that weapon, you can do other things. There's certain character abilities that will cost moxie. You're able to move based on your movement, whatever that is. When you move, you can't move through terrain or ruffians, but you can move through other characters. If you enter certain areas, there's a cost to it in some cases. Other times you simply can't. Sometimes you can interact with certain locations and you'll check the bottom here. Like for instance, the wishing well, you can pay coins to make a wish in attempts to get something unique. Sometimes it's going to give you a unique item from the item deck and other times it's going to give you absolutely nothing depending on what you roll. In the game, after everybody has taken their turn, whether it be they ran out of moxie and movement and they have nothing else they want to do, then it's going to simply rinse and repeat and you're going to restore your moxie and continue playing. The game is over when either all the town folks are eliminated from the game or removed from the board, in which case the ruffian wins. However, if you defeat the ruffian, the game is over and you have successfully defeated that round and you'll move on to the next one over here. You'll go ahead and start the buying phase. You'll do all that. You'll flip over this, reset the board up and you'll fight a new character like Will Barlow. And after that, you'll continue and you'll look at the different requirements for each of the fights. On the final fight, like I said before, you'll flip over the character board and do whatever it says, have a unique new twist. So I can't explain it here because there's a ton of different things, but I did explain one of them already. Regardless though, that's a basis of the game. There's a ton of extra little pieces for the terrain that change the game and affect how you're going to do certain things and what you're going to do. And you're basically going to be moving like a tactics-based game. So in this case with this big guy, he'll, he'll be moving kind of on the grid lines. And of course, these will be miniatures in the actual campaign. And you're going to be able to see all around them, but right now I, I'm using this side because this side's bla blank. But this is going to move like this on the grid, and it's going to have a larger space, and these guys are going to move like this. They don't move diagonally, they just move up, down, left, and right. I think you pretty much get the idea of the game, though. Let's come up and discuss it. I'll tell you what I think about it, and whether or not you should pick up Townsfolk Tussle. The game looks surprisingly like Cuphead, the video game. So let's talk Townsfolk Tussle, the beat-em-up sheriff game where you're trying to protect the town of Eureka Springs from all these ruffians coming in to basically gain control and you are hoping hoping to like push them out and for one of you to be sheriff. A uh, couple little things I didn't mention is at the end of a fight obviously the bad guys get more challenging which I did say but what I didn't say is based on the feats you complete when you complete them you'll gain something and you're gonna have these little feat cards that say stuff like engineer interact with two different terrain pieces and you can choose to get two coins or a moxie for this fight it's up to you but at at the end, uh, based on how many you completed, the person who has the most is going to be the new sheriff, and the sheriff will get certain things depending on uh, what the boss drops and whatnot. Speaking of boss drops, uh, it'll tell you what unique things the boss drops at the end if you beat them. For instance, Dozy, the one I was explaining before, drops his car keys, which basically gives you a plus one in your moxie and terrain rolls when you're driving the car, or a fake badge whenever a townsfolk achieves a feat throughout the game, he'll, he or she will gain an HP, and handcuffs is basically a weapon that will hit something as well as pull them or draw them in adjacent to them. Uh, you're also going to get unique items as well, which come in different circumstances. They're pretty powerful. They're basically considered special gear and accessories. You'll see those as well. I want to talk about a couple town events. We'll just go through two of them so you get an idea of what they are like. The team coordinator town event. When you draw this card, you're going to do it in turn order. So if you're first in turn order, you'll do this card. It says, feels like the team's not fighting at their full potential. Maybe their gear is holding them back. You convince them, you know what's best for the group, and organize a little swap -a -roo. You force two townsfolk to swap all weapons with one another. Okay, so you'll just do that one. However, one like this one, Bad Investments, it's got that 
that little orange border there, it'll say you borrowed some coins from the townsfolk and lost it all. They haven't noticed yet, but it's only a matter of time. You keep this card face down in front of you. At the start of the next town phase during this card, uh, turn this card face up, the townsfolk with the most coins other than you loses six coins. It's brutal. It's a secret card. You don't reveal it until it tells you to, and they're all very specific as to what they tell you to do and when they tell you to do it. Some of them are going to be beneficial, others not so much. And, of course, I want to talk about the different terrain pieces, like the rickety farm. When you go to this, you can spend Moxie, you'll roll the die, and then based on what the die says, you'll get to do. Whether it be nothing happens, or maybe he gives you HP and then he locks the farm up, or maybe he actually pulls out his shotgun and blasts the ruffian for you and then locks the farm up. So, old farmer Wrinkle, or whatever his name is, <laughs> shoots the bad guy for you and then locks up. Get off my lawn! Uh, the Jalopy. You can actually activate the car, so certain terrain pieces activate, and it'll drive across the field until it runs into terrain, and whatever it hits along the way takes damage. Super cool. And there's items that kind of coincide with the certain terrain pieces. The Wishing Well, you can put money into it, roll the die, and hope you get something, whether it be a unique item or even potentially health. And then, of course, you're going to have the features here. These ones you can go through, and they'll affect you into Different ways. You can find something in the cornfield, you can end your turn in the corn's field. Uh, some of them don't do anything, like this uh, pond here. However, they do interact with the bosses, they do interact with how the ruffians function, where they can go, what you can do with them. So they all have some unique twist to them, not only just being there to block or hinder yourself or help you in some way. The artwork for the game is amazing. I am in love with this artwork. I love the game Cuphead. This one has very similar style artwork to that game. It feels a little similar in theme and style. You're moving around, defeating ruffians. They're kind of bumping around and, and like flailing the arms and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Sometimes they're crazy powerful and other times they kind of whiff their cards. All the cards function differently. I might say, target this individual. Move the amount of spaces you can move to this individual, and then do a whirling attack doing damage all around you too, for three damage for everybody, right? So there's things like that it'll do, or it'll say like to move to the wishing well and uh, perform this or heal this or whatever. And so they all kind of function uh, differently and they're going to feel different for each boss fight you go up against, as well as of course, when you fight them. Each boss has a more like difficult or challenging power as the game progresses. Personally, what I would have liked to see is maybe some extra uh, things in the rule book that to change the terrain boards up so if I don't, I don't if I fight, fight Dozy again the board's a little different that'd be kind of cool like an alternate type of thing here but as for the artwork and as for the style how the bosses function the feel of Cuphead it's all here if you like Cuphead you're gonna like this game it's really really close to nature but it, it functions kind of like a tactics game uh, additionally the quality of the game excellent quality. The game looks wonderful, even with just the standees, it's great. If I just ended up getting standees with double-sided, and a double-sided, I would be very happy with that. But what it appears is that it's going to be actually miniatures, which is really, really cool. I hope that's what they do. I don't know if it's a stretch goal or whatever, but that's kind of what I'm guessing. However, really, really nice. I like the fact that the bosses are larger than you, and they take up more area, and they move similar, but they have a different feel to them as they're moving based on what their cards do. The bosses turn is very easy. The phases are very easy. What you can do on your turn is very apparent. Uh, what I'd like to see actually on your turn, in addition to what you can do, which is like moving and interacting with items and terrain pieces and fighting, utilizing your different weapons, is trading. I think trading would be really cool. Specifically, there was a card in the game that I actually talked about just recently that says something like, you can you have to swap items with another player. And if, if you only have two moxie and you have to swap in a two-player game with a player who has a three moxie item, you can't really attack. So there's like Sometimes that's not going to be as useful, but if you had a trading aspect, that would. Otherwise, you have to just revamp some of the cards in there. So it's up to you guys how you want to do it, I suppose. But personally, I like the idea of trading, even spending Moxie to trade your items back. Or if you get an item in the game, you can switch and trade. If it's there, I didn't see it in the rules, but that's something I think would be really, really nice. Uh, let's talk about some of the abilities. So we have things like Scold here. This one uh, says you move to the farthest townsfolk, and then you're going to move to that target based on your movement, and then it'll just perform an action. Sometimes cards that are bad guys will say, if they hit, perform this after effect. Other times, it's just straight for this is what happens regardless of distance. So even if it's very far away, it's a it's going to be apparent that you need to actually perform the action that it tells you to do to do uh, unless it says after effect or has specific rulings on it uh which is fine it's just a little confusing at first to gather uh drift away says place umbrella adjacent to the wishing well regardless of distance so when placing characters out 
you get the choice as far as I know. Uh, if there's two different distances that are the closest, you can choose which way it moves. And of course, it's I, I always prefer most detrimental to the cooperative players. But when it says like next to the wishing well, as long as you put on one of the two sides, one of the four sides, you will be fine. And then if something like move to the ta ta target, uh, let's see, rising waters, move to target townsfolk, the, the landscape is flying from Umbrella's nonsense. Keep this card in front of the townsfolk. When the action deck is reshuffled, all townsfolk take a damage and pull, are pulled four squares toward the pond then shuffle this back into the deck. Really, really cool. Really interesting feel to it. Some of them will actually take you off of the board. So like Dozy can pick you up and take you off. I'm talking about just a couple of the bosses here because I don't want to give away a lot of it. There's a ton of cool interesting unique features to the game I want you guys to kind of discover it for yourselves the characters uh we'll talk about the the chicken one that one's really funny basically it's going to uh potentially die and when it does it'll come back with one health basically a chicken with its head cut off and the other one is it can heal somebody for two moxie but it only has two moxie which is a problem when you switch weapons and you have a three weapon moxie requirement on the weapon so you no longer can attack so you know it can happen and then of course uh this one over here this is george iron gut he's cool when he does consumables he basically doesn't have to get rid of them. He can actually store them for the next fight. And then the Quick Trotter. He can spend two Moxie to move four spaces forward in a direct line. Love the characters. Love the bosses. It feels great. There's like little clarification points, obviously. I want to see that trading in there. Uh, I want to know if the Moxie resets every round. I'm, I'm fairly certain it does, like 99.9%. .9%, but it doesn't say that in the rules. So the, the actions that you use, you spend Moxie on your next turn. If you don't have Moxie, you literally can't do anything. So I'm guessing it resets, but I couldn't find it in the rule book. And then of course, just little things about the range, specific things. Uh, the final fights on some of them are interesting. Like this one here tells you that you actually get another boss into the game and you're gonna place it into the field uh, as the final fight. And when you take that character, you're gonna take that character's deck and you'll use it for movement or do you use it for the entire card? I'm not sure, it doesn't specify enough. I just always do highest detriment to all the players, so I'm guessing it's utilizing the entire card, but it only says the movement of that. But what if you choose the movement and the character specifically says to move to the fence and they can't move there? I guess they just don't move at all, huh? So just little clarifications like that. Nothing that can't just be changed in the rules, but overall, Honestly, these are a lot of nitpicks. The game is a lot of fun. The challenge ramps up as you move throughout the game. You work cooperatively with other players, but only knew you know your character and what the character needs to do and what the best way to become Sheriff is. All of the different unique items. There's a ton of content. There's a boatload of cards in this game. You're never going to play the same game twice. Even if you use the same characters and the same boss and the same terrain area, it's not going to feel the same because of all the different things you can choose to pick up throughout the game and how it feels using your money, selling a Equipment you get going and finding an item in the cornfields all works great the buying order and the beating order being able to switch that based on the order allows you to kind of manipulate who's gonna buy first and who's gonna fight first and how and what weapons you should pick and what armor and boots and all that good stuff as well I'm a big fan of this game I love the fact that it has a ton of extra terrain elements and a ton of extra cards that all feel unique and different uh, that function with each of the different bosses and they all are integrated with their terrain and how their boards function overall a very 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 solid game this game came so close to my approval it just has a little few little things in it but otherwise an amazing game if you like the style of artwork if you like a beat em up cooperative game that has tactics you're going to enjoy this game and overall i had a ton of fun with it i'm going to be playing this again this is what i would probably want to play on my live stream if i get enough time to do so but i definitely think you should at least take a look at the campaign link in the description townsfolk tussle it's it, it's good Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. Join our Facebook group, please. Go ahead and click that link so you can see the rest of our posts that we post up all the time so you can see these videos as well as, well as updates, stuff on our Discord. We're going to be doing auctions. I got another auction coming up today that you can go ahead and pick up games. I'm really excited to do more stuff in there. I need more people to jump in the Discord. Link in the description. Also, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. It does help us out tremendously and of course the notification bell button as well all right guys thank you so much for watching definitely look at the game i appreciate it and always i look forward to defending eureka springs with you next time but i'm gonna be sheriff <laughs>